This review is made possible by Toyota of Naperville. Toyota of Naperville is the largest Toyota dealer in Illinois, with hundreds of new and used vehicles in their inventory. Visit www.toyotaofnaperville.com or in person at 1488 West Ogden Avenue in Naperville, Illinois. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 2020 Toyota Prius XLE Hybrid. Up front is a 1.8 liter inline four as well as a hybrid system. And down below is a CVT. This video is sponsored by carmarshall.com. If you'd like to support the channel, click the link down in the description below. Carmarshall.com advertises for over 100,000 vehicles across the US. But let's get back to that hybrid drive system. Now, before we actually dive really far into it, this is my third year in a row reviewing the current Prius. I have a 2018 Prius review, a 2019 Prius review, and now the 2020. And so, while the cars have remained fairly similar throughout, there are minor changes, and I'm excited to get into that. But what doesn't really change is that hybrid system. The nice thing about this hybrid electric system is that you actually can run it in EV mode. So there are some speed restraints, and if you absolutely floor it, it's gonna kick in that gas motor to help out. But really, you can run this thing in EV without much of a problem. And I really like that. I think as we're gearing towards fully electric vehicles, I think it's good to kind of dabble in that. And if you're just in the neighborhood at night doing 25 or under, might as well be in electric mode, why not? Now, like I said, down below is a CVT. That means continuously variable transmission. And so there's no real actual gears and you're not gonna feel this thing shift because it really doesn't. It just sort of changes the ratio within the gearbox on its own it doesn't really shift per se and so i don't really mind this i don't like it on gasoline cars on gasoline cars it feels weird and clunky because i'm so used to the normal shifting but in electric cars hybrid cars everything feels a little bit different and so one more different feeling doesn't really affect me it kind of slips under the radar with that all right so we'll switch it to ev mode and uh Kind of see how it does last but not least this prius is front wheel drive however they now offer a all-wheel drive prius that i actually reviewed i did a 2019 that was all-wheel drive and i absolutely loved it so if you're interested in that that'll be at the end of the video as well as my 2018 review if you guys would like to see the differences so let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I don't really have anything. It's actually up and off to the right is my gauges. I do have my speed up there, my odometer, my average MPG. And then to the right of that, I get a little screen showing me my power disbursement. To the right of that, I have what gear I'm in, which is very handy because the gear selector is kind of odd and we'll talk about that later. Then I have a clock and my warning lights. On the steering wheel on the left, I do have my volume controls, skip track, things like that. And then my phone options, you know, call, accept, voice commands, things like that. On the right, I do have my selector dial. That is for the little center screen. And we'll talk about that in a second. Then I have my lane departure assist heated steering wheel and my parking sensors on and off switch, which I really, really like. I like the fact that it's on the steering wheel. It's very easy to hit. I do have in this vehicle, actually, a heads up display. So I have two different options with the heads up display, just my speed in digits, which I really, really like, or I can hit this button and I get my efficiency. So how much power I'm using, how much battery I have left, things like that. I really like that. It almost looks like a racing gauge, you know, like I recently drove a C5 Corvette and it, it gave me my tachometer and my fuel and my coolant temperature in the heads up display. Well, this, this isn't as sporty. It has the battery charge, but still helpful nevertheless. To the left of the steering wheel, I get my gauge dimmer switch, my parking assist. So this vehicle actually has automatic parking assist, traction control on and off, my heads up display settings and my auto bright settings. And then of course my fuel door. On the actual door itself, I do have my lock and unlock, child locks, power mirrors, and the windows, one touch down, one touch back up, which can be said for all four windows. Getting back to that centered screen where really my gauges are, let's go through a couple of the pages. So we'll start off here with the energy monitor like I mentioned earlier, but then I have an HV system indicator giving me a bunch of information, my power and eco and charge score. 
if you guys are into statistics, if you guys are into graphs and stuff, this is a very interesting car. Fuel consumption record, which of course doesn't, doesn't really have one since this car has only done 10 miles. Drive monitor, so my average speed, my EV driving ratio, my elapsed time. So my average speed is three miles an hour and my EV duration, or excuse me, my EV driving ratio is 41%. So I've spent 41% of my time driving this car in complete EV mode. Then I have my eco savings. Wow, okay, so I can actually see trip A and trip B, of course, distance, but my fuel cost, how much I'm saving money. I've never seen this in a car before. I'm sure the previous Prius has had it or something like that, and I just missed it. Maybe not, I'll double check. But it will actually tell you how much money you are saving. Interesting. Then I have my Eco Diary, which is every day, the distance that it was driven, and the average MPG for that day. Just an insane amount of information. I absolutely love that. Then we actually get to the center console. We have two vents that say Prius. I praised this in the 2019 Prius. I think it looks great. And then the infotainment screen. Now, one big jump over the 2019 that the 2020 has is it has Apple CarPlay standard as well as Amazon Alexa. So you can actually program and get Alexa here in the Prius. Then I do have my climate controls, nothing really too crazy, except I do have a defroster button for the rear and mirrors. So I do have heated mirrors, which is absolutely awesome. And I also do have a button for eco heat and cool. So if you guys don't know, your heating and air conditioning system is obviously run off of the engine, especially the cooling system. There's a compressor that runs off of the power of the engine. And so when you're using your air conditioning, you're stressing out your engine just a slight bit more. It's not enough. You shouldn't you know, drive in the summer without using AC to try to preserve your engine. Maybe you would get an extra mile of life out of your engine. It's not that much. But it is a little bit. And so in here, you can actually make it so you're not gonna be the coldest of the cold in the summer or the warmest of the warm in the winter, but you will get a little bit better miles per gallon. You will really pinch at the pump, which is really, really nice if you'd like to do that. Another nice thing you can do to the right of that, there is a button that has a driver and then a passenger that is a ghost. He has an X in front of him. You can make it so the heating and cooling will only focus on the driver and nowhere else in the cabin. This of course will save energy, save power, save a lot of things, and it's really nice. If you're driving alone, why try to heat the entire car? It'll heat you up faster or cool you down faster, which is really, really nice. And I think that's really smart that you can kind of angle the climate controls where you specifically want it. Down below the climate controls, we have our shifter, drive mode and EV mode. So we'll first talk about the shifter. Prius has always done this. They've always had this weird shifter and I'm used to it by now, but if you've never driven a Prius, this might take a little bit of getting used to. It's kind of like a arcade joystick and then park is its own button. It's a little weird to get used to, but it's not the end of the world. Then we have drive mode. So we have power mode, eco mode, and normal mode. Eco mode is obviously going to try to push the best miles per gallon you can get. Normal mode, normal and then power mode that's going to engage the gasoline engine as well as the hybrid system give you the most amount of power the system can physically give you then of course like i said ev mode puts it into ev mode which i'm going 20 miles an hour and it says ev mode not currently available then down to the center console i do have a wireless charging pad which is really really nice i'm actually using it right now if your phone has wireless charging capability you literally just lay it down there and it will start charging you don't have to think about it you don't have to fumble around with wires things like that then i have my heated seats i have high or low and the nice thing about this is that this is a huge advancement over the 2018 2018 had heated seats at least the one that i drove but they were kind of under the dash the dash was shaped differently and it was sort of under and from where i was sitting i could not physically see the button and so i did not know that it even had heated seats till towards the end of the video i think i was like moving over or something like that and i happened to look and i was like is that a heated seat button this it's right here in the middle i absolutely love it it's very easy to reach very easy to work and i appreciate that 
Then we just have two cup holders. Now the seats are leather, they are nice. Heated, like I said, power, they are not memory, but they are power and heated, which you can get away with. I mean, it's a good modern seat. They're nice and comfortable. They don't have aggressive side bolstering, which I wouldn't expect out of obviously a Prius. But speaking of seats, let's do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2020 Toyota Prius and something new for 2020 is that I actually get two 2.1 amp USB chargers back here. Other than that, I really don't have that many features. I obviously have power windows. I don't even get a light. I do have two cup holders in the center console. Again, nothing too crazy. The back seats are decently comfortable. My knees barely touch the front seat. If I spread them just a little bit, they don't. Um, and so that's really nice. It has a good amount of room. Headroom, it's okay. Um, I'm about 5'11", it's a little close, but I do have these bubbles, as you could see on the video, it curves up like this. So I do have a little bit of bubble room for my head. But other than that, it's not really anything crazy, but let's hop back and take a look at the hatch. All right, I'm literally standing on 100% pure ice, but uh, we're gonna try to do this. Here is the hatch. Nice big old Prius badge, got a light over here. Max four kilograms, got some tie downs up front. That's really it. I do have this cargo cover. Let me get a hold of it. There we go. So you can kind of hide your stuff, but it is a decent sized trunk. And I like that you can see right into it. It is more of a hatchback rather than, you know, just a sedan. Last but not least about the interior is that I do have a sunroof. It's not huge, but I do like it. It adds a nice light airiness to the car. Now we have to talk about the looks. The looks have not changed too much since 2019. I love the roof rack. This is an optional roof rack that you can get from Toyota, but man, I really, really like it. And I like the red color. The holidays are in full swing. I do think this is a very cheery, light color. It, and it's not a red that's gonna hurt your eyes. You know, the Honda Civic Type R that I drove a couple months ago, that hurt your eyes. My old RX-7, my old red one, that hurt your eyes in the direct sunlight. But this is more of a cherry, a little bit darker of a color. And I really like it. It's, it's classy, but it's different. It stands out, but not too much. And I think overall, the look of the Prius is actually pretty good right now. The older Priuses, not so much. But this, the 2020 can definitely be put into the better looking category. Overall, I have to say, again, I'm pretty happy with the Prius. I think the fact that they now have Apple CarPlay is huge. Toyota really resisted putting Apple CarPlay into their vehicles for quite some time. They really wanted to do their own link system. And at the end of the day, Apple just does it better. They have more R&D into it. They can dedicate more R&D to it. And I think honestly, Apple CarPlay, at least I'm an Apple person. I don't, I don't have an Android, but Apple CarPlay, I genuinely think is changing the game because I can get into literally any car, any car that has Apple CarPlay, and I immediately know how to use almost the entire radio. As long as I can navigate to Apple CarPlay, I can, I know how everything is laid out and it works. And so just from a simplicity standpoint, I'm really excited that this car has Apple CarPlay. I think it'll be a lot better. But overall, again, another great year for the Prius. The last two years have been great as well. And I'll leave those at the end of the video if you would like to see my 2018 and 2019 Prius reviews. But thank you so much to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their 2020 Prius. I always appreciate it. They have absolutely great service. Their information is up on the screen. If you are interested in a Prius, definitely let them know. They will help you find the right car. If you're not interested in a Prius or even a Toyota, they have over 400 used cars on the lot at all times, so you will find what you are looking for. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like to. Take care, guys. I, I, I